What's the crack, lads? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be taking a look at a new player review slash breakdown and training guide. And as I will say all the time, be careful when you're training up these players because there is a lot of complicated stuff now ongoing with the managers and stuff like that. So we're going to be having these player guides and these training guides for Enzo, Sabazalai, and of course for Vritz as well. As you see, these are Showtime players. Um, so yeah, I mean... Genuinely, I think that you, you're going to have to be careful with these builds, ads, especially with the way that the stats are working and the manager issues. So I will say that, right? But moving on from this intro that we got, this little trailer that we got here from the three boys, I do feel that you are now being given different types of players. I think we're being given different types of players that you can actually train up slightly... I won't say easier, but the players are slightly better when you train them up compared to what they were releasing before. So for newcomers, it's always going to be nice that you kind of you kind of know where, where, what you need to do and what player that you're going to be using if you go for these. I mean, you're not going to accidentally spin for these and be like, oh, you know, I wish I got somebody else or I wish this guy's stats weren't as good or, or were better or whatever. Because you know exactly what you're getting and you know exactly where the meta is at the game. If you haven't been watching me for a while, um, you can check out some of my other videos. But essentially, you do need to, need to have your players very, very solid in their main stats. Now, when I say main stats, is that for the likes of Fernandez here, right, with his booster, okay, this is going to kind of change his card a little bit because we're getting a defensive build for him. Now, I would have always said that Fernandez is better as a kind of a Barella type figure, box to box. So you have your sitting DMF. Um, or you're sitting anchorman in DMF like Casemiro, Rodri, Fabinho, one of those boys, or else one of the legends like Makalele or somebody like that, right? But then you have Fernandez that covers every blade of grass, right? But now with the way the game is gone, I do think that energy in midfield is the way to go because the game is just so interception heavy sometimes, blocked passing lanes and whatever, right? So we're going to take a look at a couple of builds. Now, because of the manager issue, I'm actually going to have these builds kind of like free of that issue right so it means that when they've fixed the manager issue we'll need to revisit it a little bit but for the next couple of weeks i think we do need to have a look at the stats um where they are so again with her fernandez here we're going to get dueling uh, plus two booster he's got some nice player skills as well he's down as a box to box as i said one touch pass soul control scissors faint low lofted pass true passing sliding tackle doesn't have interception but you could give him that doesn't have blocker but you could give him that I definitely think adding him as a defensive player is where you want to go with him um, and I'm going to show you why right so we're going to go over to eFootball DB and we're going to show you the build of him now I would say that Fernandez is probably the pick of the pack here because it's very hard to get a really solid box to box DMF obviously Bellingham and Barella can do that role as well but I feel that you do give up a lot of pace or else a lot of defense um, when you have it. I mean, this guy reminds me of Kante. He's similar kind of in how he moves around the pitch. Very silky on the ball. Brilliant dribbler. Um, one of the best box-to-boxes in the game. And we've gone for a 4 into passing, 5 into dribbling, 12 into dexterity, 9 into lower body, and 9 into defending build here. Now, as I said, with the booster here, you're going to be getting the manager boost and the booster boost, right? But with the manager issue at the moment, um, that is obviously going to bring this into consideration. So if you missed that video, I'll leave a link in the description. If you haven't missed it, uh, then great. You'll know what I'm talking about. But we're going to just boost this guy up and train him up without depending on the manager um issue to come into fruition or come into uh, the picture right so we've gone for this build very very solid defensive minded build right if you are set defensively in midfield i would say that one recommendation that you could have because of the booster that he's getting right you could actually take this down to the aggression to be maybe about 87 uh, maybe 88 that when they do fix the manager boost that's obviously going to be 90 um, and then I would probably turn him into you still have with this stats you have your ball control you have all of that stuff right but the dexterity is the big one here with 80 there I would probably depending on your play style I would probably pop four into passing or else four into uh, tight possession to get that tight possession up with that balance because he's not physically that strong but I do think that that's more of an attack and build while still being a complete box to box. If you are using a, a, a center midfielder, right? I genuinely do feel you need to have stats that are kind of like very solid across the board, right? 
We also have Ritz that I want to talk about. So Ritz is down as a 95 with this build here. 14 into passing, 7 into dribbling and dexterity, and 5 into lower body. Very easy player to build, very easy training guide to do because of the player stats that he has and because of the other uh, booster that he's going to be getting as well. Um, he doesn't have visionary pass. It's a showtime skill that is with Sabazalai here, but Veritz is a very decent player, lads. You have him here with the speed, balance, dribbling, and tight possession booster. He's got ball carrying, double touch, sombrero, sole control, long range curler, chip shot control, one touch pass, true pass, and pinpoint crossing. I definitely would love him. One of my favorite players to use back in eFootball 22 as a budget attacking midfielder. I think he was in my Division 1 squad when we first did that road to glory. Very, very good player. That is the build that we've gone with there to take everything into consideration. What you want with this guy, lads, is ball control, tight possession, balance, and acceleration. And you also have with this build low passing, speed, offensive awareness, and a little bit of finishing. So it's a very decent card for what you're getting there. And then Liverpool's attacking midfielder kind of has been playing well the last couple of weeks, I will say. Um, and uh, you've got, again, you've got a very solid card here with the booster. Again, we're going to take a quick look at his booster here. He also has visionary pass. And with that booster, he's going to get ball control, dribbling, tight possession, and low pass. So this technique plus two was kind of the first one with the messy build, the messy booster that they had. Um, the one thing I would say is, right, he is missing one or two, uh, like, attack and midfielder essential skills, right? Low lofted pass is a big one that he's missing there, but he does have the visionary pass and the way to pass. So that will be kind of animation based. He does also have long range curler, knuckle shot, and dipping shot. So he's kind of a shooting attack and midfielder, which kind of feeds into the build that we're going to do of him, right? So as you see here, ball control at 88, balance at 91. You've also got finishing at 83 and low pass at 88. Speed and acceleration, very nice. And this is the build. 6, 5, 7, 14, and 4 down from left there. Uh, shooting, passing, dribbling, dexterity, and lower body. Look, there's so many attacking midfielders in the game now, lads. Like, there genuinely is so many attacking midfielders in the game. It's very difficult to choose which one to go for, right? You've got this week's player of the week as well, Mbappe, um, which, we cover, which we covered. And he's an attacking midfielder whole player. But if you are going for a creative type player like Vritz, or, uh, or sorry, Vritz is whole player, but if you're going for a creative type playmaker like Sabazlai, there is a difference in how they move. It's, it's small. I think they've kind of like nullified it a little bit compared to what it was before, but it is still small, right? Um, so you will need to get used to that if you're used to playing with whole players. We also have a selection of players here. We're just going to give a quick rundown and a guide to them. So you've got Valverde there, right? 32 levels, very decent, kind of like Enzo. That is how I would train him. Actually, very similar to Enzo there. Um, if you do not get Enzo and you're looking for him, you get Valverde. We also have Bernardo Silva. I've never really played with Bernardo Silva, but this guy looks like on the ball. He's going to be like Pedri. I've played him a bit, but probably haven't given him enough, uh, enough time. And also Partey, who I would say is a very, very strong player defensively. Uh, especially when you train him up quite nicely, you're going to have 90 aggression while still having about 80 speed. And of course, you're going to be able to get that lower uh, or that physical contact up as well. Not so much of a passer or a speedster, but a very solid player as well. So I do feel like they are starting to kind of bring out these players a little bit more realistic now. And that by the time the next big update launches, uh, whether that's eFootball 25 or whatever way we have it, I do think that the stats will be a lot more balanced um, compared to where they're kind of a bit crazy now, where every player that they bring out was like 95, 96. So let me know what your, your thoughts are. Are you going to spin for them? I would say that they are a good selection. I know a lot of people, especially in the Discord, if you haven't joined our Discord, you can come on over and join it. But a lot of people in the Discord very excited for Vritz because he's such a unique player as a whole player with the booster. Um, and he is just a beast of a player, man. He just moves differently on the pitch. He's like Pedri. Stats don't really do him justice or, you know, tell the full picture. So, yeah, that is it for me. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll be back soon with another review. Until then, don't forget to like and subscribe. Peace.